Hey everybody, you're listening to another episode of Wolfpack Podcast. Today is episode number 114, and today we're talking about Star Wars Rebels Path of the Jedi. Um, this is the eighth episode in season one of Star Wars Rebels, um, and it's going to officially air on Monday, and it's already come out on Disney XD app, so that's why we're able to talk about it early. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about this episode. I'm Corey, to my left or right, however it shows on the screen, we got Chris. Hey everybody out there. Dan? Hello there. Yeah, I still can't believe that they're showing these episodes earlier on the on the app, because that seems kind of weird, but it's good for our reviewing purposes. <laughs> and... Hey, hey everyone. Um, yeah, I agree. It's, it's good to be able to grind through one episode, you know, five, six, seven, eight times before it even airs to yeah. kind of let it sink in, but no, it's, it's cool. I'm, I'm glad it Disney XD continues to do that. They do that with a lot of their shows, so... Yeah, I think the one thing about them being able to do that is that Chris, me and Chris were talking about this a few months ago, and Chris had a good point of the whole fact that um, Disney is probably testing out the online portions of this more because that's kind of where TV is heading. I mean, Netflix, you know, apps. So I could see why they'd probably get a higher viewing rate sometimes in the app than on TV because you can virtually watch it whenever you want, wherever you want with not a lot of commercials. So, um, I like the way they're doing it. I know some people aren't able to view the app because of their, their TV providers, but... Um, yeah, it depends on depends on where you live, too. If it's if you're not in the U.S., you can't do it. And, right. But there's ways around that, apparently. Not that I condone such things. But. <laughs> I think it's really just up to um, the way that they want to put it out. And today, I, actually, I want to bring something up before we start reviewing this episode about Disney XD. Um, they were, uh, I guess, premiering a movie. Maybe it wasn't a premiere, but it was a it was a movie that I don't, I don't think they've shown for a while. And they showed Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which kind of caught me off guard because that's a Warner Brothers-owned product. And, co- you know, the whole franchise mm. is very Warner Brothers. And, yeah, I um, watched it today, actually. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> which kind of also surprised me because Disney XD, um, obviously Rebels, we've seen some not kid-friendly stuff on there. And I think Disney XD is branching out a bit more. Where Harry, That specific Harry Potter film is kind of dark, a little bit scary for little kids, probably. So, um, def- definitely makes sense why Rebels is on there and not Disney Channel. They can do a whole lot more with that than they could on Disney Channel. But also, they also uh, show the Ninja Turtles '90s movie a few weeks ago, and that's owned by Nickelodeon. So there must be some type of contract or some. But I, I did love think- that movie. It's by the way, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, I did think about today while I was watching Harry Potter that Clone Wars was owned by WB, and that partially the reason that was canceled was because of WB. So I have heard a lot of rumors that Disney is in talks to buy WB. So I don't know if that's... Holy crud. Yeah. If what? They do, I mean, they're going to own DC. They're going to own... Own everybody. Every, yeah, might as well just go for everything. Um, yeah, so that, that was interesting to see today. The one thing that I hate is that big Disney XD logo, though, on the freaking screen all the time. <laughs> that thing's huge. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's get down Nobody to this. Nobody does marketing better than Disney, right? Yep. Absolutely. Except maybe Gene Simmons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, so this episode is pretty huge because we got a return of another original trilogy character. We've already got an Obi-Wan Kenobi Darth Vader, and now we get Yoda, but not voiced by Tom Kane, who we usually hear him, you know, voiced by. This time it's Frank Oz, who's the original Yoda, and you know, did Yoda and the OT in the prequels. So that was a, a nice surprise. I kind of wish that that wasn't spoiled prior to this episode coming out, because I feel like that would have been something that fans would have gotten really stoked about, just listening to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, you know, I agree. And, I love Tom Kane. That guy's awesome, but you can definitely hear the difference between his Yoda and Frank Oz's Yoda. So, 
for people to probably hear that, you would know that that's Frank Oz, I think. Um, yeah. And didn't uh, Freddie Prince Jr. comment on Twitter or something? It's like, they wish he wouldn't have, wish they wouldn't have spoiled that yeah. part. Yeah, yeah, me and him were going back and forth in um, the messages about how, how they spoiled it. And he was telling me that that's what he was hinting to us about in the show we'd done with him a few times. And me and Dan totally caught on to that as soon as the Yoda thing was announced. Yeah. I remember talking to you about that. Like, this has to be it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, but you know, I mean, it 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 does sound a lot very very nostalgic Yoda from what I grew up with. I mean, again, like you said, Tom Kane did a fantastic job in Yoda with in various projects, not just Clone Wars. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and really made that character his own just as much as Frank Oz. But having Frank Oz come back and do the voice, I mean, it's still chilling. Yeah. You uh, know? My. I watched it with my family earlier this evening, and uh, my wife was listening to it. We watched the episode together, and she's like, that sounds a lot like Yoda from Empire Strikes Back. I'm like, yeah, it's Frank Oz from <laughs> from the original, and she thought that was very, very cool. Yeah, that was cool. Oh, yeah. I, I think mean, so we've got James Earl Jones coming back. We've got Frank Oz coming back. I mean, it's really old home year, week, month, whatever. Yep. We have, I mean, James Arnold Taylor from The Clone Wars. Obviously, Ian McGregor didn't come back, but I think that moving for Oh, and Lando is Billy D. Williams coming uh, this Monday Billy on the D. app. So we're, we're, we're not done from original trilogy characters, and we've gotten four this season so far. and Actually, five, sorry, six. We've gotten six. We've gotten Archie 2 and C-3PO. We've gotten yeah. um, Vader and... Uh, yeah, just nice little surprises throughout the season. I remember when Dave Filoni said that there's not going to be tons of original tr- trilogy characters appearing in season one. I think that was all a cover-up because who knows who else is going to come. Has this- anybody else besides Anthony Daniels ever done C-3PO's voice yes. in anything? Yes, there has been. Yeah. I can't recall the names. Because I seem like he pretty much has a pretty strong grip on that character and doesn't want to give it up. It seems yeah, because like. he did it on you know the droids cartoon. He did it you know just everywhere. I know? remember on the old Clone NPR, Wars, original Clone Wars. The the old orig- the NPR radio adaptations. He was the voice on that as well. Yeah. With Perry King as Han Solo. I'm like who? <laughs> <laughs> I remember as a kid listening to that. Like I don't know these people. <laughs> um. I think also one thing about this episode is it's definitely transitioning into the how you see Kanan kind of grow from the Book of New Dawn into this version of Kanan where he's more of a, a Jedi and he's trying to develop Jedi teachings. Um, I could see if people who haven't read A New Dawn would get confused by this because Kanan says in, in a few lines he says that he's been lost Um so I could see how this could confuse people if you haven't read A New Dawn, where you kind of get an insight of what he's been up to. And uh, almost kind of like a smuggler he's kind of been. I mean, he's just been mm-hmm. going so from he's, job to he's job. he's kind of turned his back on his Jedi ways and embraced the the smuggler outlaw attitude, um, which I kind of get. I mean, I didn't read the book, but he's definitely you can tell that there's a, a, a past history and a bit of sadness to him. Right. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see that explored a little bit more somehow. Maybe that's what the comic will be about. Absolutely. And here we have an image of um, Kanan, I guess, using the Force to find the... I don't know what he was doing, to be honest, but... He's that's, meditating uh, with the holocron and... Oh, that's right, it was the holocron. Searching out the... You know, the temple. Looking, looking for temples, yeah. Right. I think... One thing about Rebels that I'm beginning to pick up more is just, like, the glossiness of the armor that you constantly see, like, hitting the light. I love that glossiness look. I was thinking that, too, earlier, is that I think this is the best-looking episode so far. Like, yep. some of the cool, you know, the panorama, wide, you know, wide shots of just the landscapes of Lothal, and yep. it, it just looked really, really cool. You know the point of view. You know different uh, shots of the uh, the phantom. You know overhead shots flying above the ground, and just the the scenery was one of the better looking episodes. I thought, and um, 
in the episode was more serious than any of the others as well. There wasn't yeah. so much kidding around. Yeah. You know, it was, it was, I think, the most adult episode of all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was kind of Ezra's growing up episode in a way where he's starting right. to realize what he is, what he is supposed to become, and what Kanan is trying to kind of help him to become. So I think this is this is like the Luke Dagobah cave for Ezra. I was just yep. I was just about to say that I loved how there was the not so subtle nods to the the Dagobah cave, uh, you know, uh, with Luke and his trials and yep. with Ezra's trials. I mean, you, I knew immediately that this was a. I think I remember telling you, yeah, this is a dream sequence right here. I bet you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was, when I when I um, realized, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, Jason. Go ahead. <laughs> when I realized it was the dream sequence, it was, you know, uh, Kanan meditating outside of the room, and Ezra goes in, and then all of a sudden he's like, Kanan's coming into the room again. It's like, oh, this is all a dream from yeah, yeah, or, you yeah. know, all a, a force and yet, apparition. This is the same. This is the same scene where Yoda appears. Which I found to be very fitting. Right. Yep. You know. Yep. So when they walk into the temple, almost oh, immediately yeah. you see two dead Jedi um, to the sides. This isn't something that that um, a lot of people were saying there were statues, but kind of with the Luminara deal, Kanan pretty much confirmed it. Apparently, these are Jedi's who have let their pad ones go to find that you know whatever they're looking for. And they don't come back, and the Jedi die. So that was, that was, a, I think, a very heavy theme within Rebels. I, I yeah. mean, I've never heard of that before. So that was interesting to to, to hmm. hear about. And whether or not this is a specific Jedi, who knows? But well, show the other one. Yeah, the other one. A lot of people are saying, "Oh, that's um, sassy tin," but I don't think so. Horns are wrong. No. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely from that race. But well, I thought that initially too. Yeah, Stacey's teeth horns just come down around his face. They don't do the curl like a ram. Yeah, besides, wasn't he killed on screen somewhere? Yep. yep. And in mm -hmm. um, uh, <laughs> Revenge of the Sith. Yep. Yeah. So he's. I think this. Yeah, this is probably maybe something of a species, just a little bit different with the horns, or maybe so, I knew automatically it wasn't him because the horns are just totally wrong. It looks more like a, uh, what do you call it, a bantha tusks than, you know, okay. anything. But, yeah, so we'll talk about that dream sequence. You get Very Kane. Brief. The Inquisitor comes in. You get Kane coming in. And I think, yeah, like Jason said, the moment we all realize there's a dream sequence is when he just runs in. But, again, just to verify that more, is Kane being killed off you know, within the eighth episode of Rebels, yeah, it's definitely not going to happen. <laughs> so, and then like all oh, the Inquisitors there, you know, it's like it's clearly a parallel with Vader in the cave and the Inquisitor in the cave, and you know, falling down a deep pit. You know, just like every star, every Star Wars movie has the giant shaft that you fall down. You know, it's like yeah, 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 and. I noticed that it was a, it was a heart shot here. It wasn't like he just stabbed him; he just went right for the heart, which was um. Yeah, I couldn't tell. It looked kind of like through the shoulder. Like know. one of those, one of those fake. Uh, you put the lightsaber through the the shoulders and. In the armpit. armpit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the armpit. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> so that was interesting, and the Inquisitor, of course, coming. Um, I could see this freaking out kids though. Was Kanan's dead? What? My daughter. She's like, did he kill? Did he kill him? <laughs> <laughs> she just kicked, he just kicked her down the hole. Kicked him down the hole. Yeah, like, he's okay. <laughs> like it's a dream, sweetie. It's a dream. But yeah. still, the, the the Inquisitor dialogue in this episode is the best so far. I mean, just his monologuing throughout the entire thing was really pretty good. Well, remember oh, they yeah. said that when you see the Inquisitor show up, you know he's bad news and people are running scared from him. And mm -hmm. I think this sequence, at least in Ezra's mind, yeah. shows that. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. So this is yes. definitely a guy that strikes fear into the hearts of everybody. It's like, yeah, it's like a stalker. You know, he's like everywhere, he's like everywhere you go, he's 
you know, chasing you down some hallway or tunnel or, you know, killing your friends and... Yeah. No. Yeah, speaking of that, Ezra lands in the ghost in the dream and um, everybody in the ghost, the ghost crew is talking bad about him on how they're using him and yep. all that stuff. And when Zeb confronts him, then the Inquisitor kills Zeb. And obviously they did it where they just show Ezra's face and you see you know, the red lightsaber kind of going back and forth and you, you see the shadow of Hera being killed and then you see Sabine's foot like you know, you know, you know they're dead. I mean, they're screaming, you know, bloody murder. <laughs> yeah. you, know, so you, you know they're dead. Which, yeah, that was uh, something a lot of shows don't do is kill off all their main characters, even in a dream sequence. <laughs> eight episodes right away. It was a dream. <laughs> right. I always find it interesting whenever Yoda gets used in a show or a video game. It's always the character finding his path, and Yoda is always the best like to use in this because he always got the hero along their yeah. journey and uh, I, I think it's cool this is a very crucial part for Ezra because it shows what the future can be and right. uh, what his actions can lead up to yeah yeah, and, and I think the, other... the last time we saw him Ezra was dangerously close to what we know as the dark side mm -hmm. so that has to have affected him somehow and we did get to see a little bit of that in this episode yeah. Speaking of that episode where he does the, you know, force power that controls the, uh, I can't remember what those things are called. Uh, Critter. Whatever those, those beats are. Um, I I didn't notice until later viewings like his that Ezra's eyes change color. Oh really? I didn't. I think they that. change to yellow because they're oh, wow. normally that bright bright blue. Yeah. Yeah. And when he's controlling the beast from, you know, he that beast comes up from behind him and he's using the force, I think his eyes are the gold color. Wow. Interesting. Hmm. I'll bring a... I have to go back and rewatch it to confirm, but I'm pretty sure that that's what happens. Hmm. I have a screenshot of that here, so let me just pull that up if I can find it in time. But yeah, I think like like Jason was saying, this is definitely the most adult themed episode, especially because a lot of the main characters just you know, die and, and this this was definitely heavy in, in, in terms of, of where they can go with it. And I think animation wise it was superb. I mean you couldn't ask for a better animated show, I don't think. It's it's, mm. it's so good the way they, they you know shine the light and, and make the scenery pop out. I mean, they. Really... I think because it was a dream, they were able to go there. You know, right. if it was yeah. really something that happened in, in in the real world, they probably would have shied away from it a little bit. Obviously, they're not going to kill the whole cast in the eighth episode, as you're saying. Right. But the fact that it's a dream, it's like they could really shock the viewers. You know. Right. Well, even before he got into the cave, they had the the temple that was hidden in the ground, and it would corkscrew kind of up through the through yeah. the ground. That was a cool effect. It it reminded me of something and I can't place what it is, but it was a cool representation of how to keep the Jedi temple you know hidden. Right. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. I mean, maybe you're I thinking thought... uh, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. No. I can't <laughs> think of that. Did that kind of spin out of the ground. <laughs> it did. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So here we have the Inquisitor. Um, this is where Ezra is confronting his fear, and he lets the Inquisitor take a jab at him, and obviously nothing happens because it's a, a dream sequence. And and then when Ezra gets back to where he needs to be, Yoda comes. And the, this specific, um, I guess, like they said, disembodied Yoda um, this is exactly what the la the final episodes of Clone Wars touched upon. Um, the those priestesses that were with Yoda on mm -hmm. Oraband had those um, things that were following him. That was that that was them. Those little dots. The sprites. Um, yes, yeah, sprites. There you go. And um, I guess Yoda has found out how to master that, and he can now do it. So. Um, 
that's that was a cool nod to tying in everything together in one episode. Um, and obviously Yoda is talking with Ezra, which was awesome. And uh, then Kanan gets a gets a surprise visit with Yoda, and I thought he'd be more like "You're alive" type thing than than how is this happening? That was that was cool though. The Kanan was shocked by it. Um, mm. I guess that is kind of like "You're alive" then. So that was uh, that was definitely awesome to see, and I think. Again, hearing Frank Oz was just so awesome, and of course he was doing his Empire Strikes Back Yoda, which was uh, very cool. Mm-hmm. So, what did you guys think about the transition from, I guess, the 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 Clone Wars representation of Yoda? I know we just talked about this, but to like the Frank Oz version. Um, I know Jason just touched upon it, but when you guys sat down and listened to it, uh, Dan and Chris, did you guys hear anything different? Well, no. That's actually that's that's a stupid question. No, well, it was definitely different from the Tom Kane version, but you know, it's this is closer to the original trilogy, so I think that's fitting. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, like everything that he said, and when you heard him say it, it felt. You know, just like it, it doesn't seem to be out of character. Right. It's, you know, it it sounded like Yoda. It felt like it's something Yoda would say. Mm-hmm. It it wasn't off putting in any way or. Yeah, yeah. Right. I really enjoyed it. It just like with when James Earl Jones came back to do the Darth Vader voice for the Spark of Rebellion premiere. Um, that sounded great too, just because it was the original voice, and you could visualize Vader s- speaking in that way. Right. Yeah, I think the thing w- what Disney is definitely trying to do is just get all the original voice actors that they can, you know, which I well, think is awesome. <laughs> Everybody wants to line up for the Disney money, so <laughs> yes, I'll be happy to come back and redo the voice of this character. Nobody's going to say no to that. No, absolutely not. And I think that's that's the difference between Clone Wars and Rebels, where Disney has more um, resources. They have the high ground in terms of you know <laughs> <laughs> ways they can get original trilogy actors. But, but all right, I mean, we're making light of it, but I mean that is the best way to use those resources is to Absolutely. get back the original cast. I mean, if you're going to spend $4 billion buying a franchise, you want your A players on it. Absolutely. No offense to anybody that was in the past. No offense to the Clone Wars cast. I'm just saying, in this new era of Star Wars, you're going to want to go after the best of the best. Right. Yeah, and, and if you're trying to tie eras together, yep. you want to make sure that, you know... You have some of those crossover characters and voices that are familiar to help, you know, transition that. Absolutely. Media. Right. So it's definitely going to be exciting to see what territory season two goes into as far as original trilogy cast members and even prequel trilogy and Clone Wars. But here we have. So, uh-huh. Is this considered season two or is this still part of season this one? This is season one. This is the. This okay. is the. I guess the. Next half of season one. Yeah, just it's a, really just a mini ser- season, to be honest. It's, right, because it's only what thirteen episodes. Yes. Yep, thirteen. And if you want to talk in production standpoint, that would be sixteen if you include Spark of Rebellion and the four shorts. Um, and we don't know yet how many episodes are going to be in season two, right? No, no. Not at the moment, but I would imagine season two is going to be a little more more episodes. I think this was their Probably. trial run um, with it, and I think the reason they okayed season two is probably the products were selling quite well. Oh, go ahead, Chris. Chris? I'm sorry. Right. Oh, sorry, I thought you were saying no. something. Oh, no, I didn't say anything. Okay. So in this specific scene here, um, we have Ezra guided by Yoda into this temple-like place um, where Ezra's getting a little mad and he's saying that the reason he wants to be a Jedi is so he, he can, you know, get revenge against the Empire. And Yoda's saying, was that, you know, did Kanan teach you that? And 
um, he's saying, no, that's kind of his view, and then he starts to realize what, you know, a Jedi truly means, and, and what he needs to do to become one. So, right, because we all know Jedi don't seek revenge. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. They were going to. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I like the scene with him in there. It's see, the only part I wasn't all that I, I don't want to say disappointed or anything with, but he made that transition so quickly. You know, he went from saying, "I want revenge for you know what the my you know parents went through." It was very Anakin like, yeah. And it's like, oh no, it's because my friends and what they do for people, and you know, it that that transition between those two viewpoints seemed to happen really quickly and just only you know a matter of a you know a minute or two. And I don't know if that's just him being young and not really knowing yeah. or if that's you know just a way to speed up the storyline right right but he's also I mean considering how he grew up he, he's learned to adapt to whatever situation mm-hmm. is and here you've got Yoda who he may or may not have heard about before I think I think in a previous episode Kanan mentioned Yoda yep um, so he obviously knows who Yoda is and here's this guy saying, no, that's the wrong way to go. He's like, oh, okay, well, let me rethink this a bit. So he's quick on his feet. But, uh, yeah, I, I like the fact that he, you know, was able to kind of, Yoda was able to come back and guide the Padawan. Yeah. Did, did we lose Corey? Looks like it. Oh, yeah. coming back. Yep, oh, okay. Yep, there he is. So he was able to guide him through questions. You know, it's like yeah. he never really tried to, you know, insert a special, you know, a particular viewpoint. He just kept prompting Ezra yeah. with questions. He know? asks the questions by answer. Or he answers the questions by asking other questions. Right. Whereas Kanan has always been kind of like, I'm not sure that I am the one to give you the answers. Yeah. And Yoda's coming out and saying, well, the answers are within you. Mm-hmm. Nobody else is going to tell you the answers. You've got to figure them out on your own in his typical Yoda way. Right. But uh, I think that's kind of an interesting, you know, if, if we see more of Yoda, which I hope we do, or hear more of Yoda, <laughs> which I hope we do, I think that'll be an interesting uh, counterbalance between Kanan and his, you know, his own journey, and then Yoda being the master, sort of guiding them both along this path. Right. Definitely. So, yeah, Yoda's kind of teaching them both from beyond. You know, mm-hmm. even though you know, he's not dead at this point, but he's still right. removed from the deal. So even though he's not there, he's still teaching from afar. He's just chilling out on Dagobah with Qui-Gon, and they're, you know, talking shop. Right. On Dagobah, on Dagobah's Jedi Temple, maybe. Yeah, well, apparently all planets have temples. Yeah. So here Ezra gets his lightsaber crystal, Yoda helps him get it, and I know a lot of people have been touching upon this, and they they said that Ezra doesn't have fingernails. That's because Ezra's wearing a glove. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Isn't yeah, that's... So that's Kanan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's That's not, how you get out of animating those. You make them wear gloves. <laughs> <laughs> So the moment finally Ezra finally gets his Dave, license. Dave, we don't have the budget for fingernails. Oh, okay. <laughs> gloves for everyone. Everyone wears gloves. I think Sabine has gloves. Um, <laughs> Just kidding. Era has gloves. So you you may be right. <laughs> Zeb doesn't. Zeb doesn't have gloves. Zeb doesn't, but it's easier. <laughs> Chopper the doesn't CD have gloves. The budget for fingernails fell through <laughs> for season one. <laughs> Remember how in Clone Wars in the beginning they couldn't do hair correctly? Yeah. <laughs> like hair Anything helmets. Else? Fingernails are the challenge this time around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Marco just hey, Marco. joined us. Marco, thanks for joining. <laughs> or maybe not. Don't worry, don't worry, you don't have to say anything. He's <laughs> uh, <laughs> the uh, light like Yoda. <laughs> Yeah. So he's got the Kyber crystal. The Kyber crystal, yeah. So then basically, obviously, gets, that's a nod to Splinter of the Mind's Eye. And previous Clone Wars unaired yeah. episodes. 
Oh really? Well, oh yeah. Isn't, isn't that what in the the one with Obi Wan and Anakin where they're trying yeah, to track yeah. down that big green crystal? Right, right. That's the Kyber crystal. Right. Which would power the Death Star. But yeah, I thought you meant that you're receiving a lightsaber. Oh no. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, in the but, the ones yeah. where the little ones go to yeah. Ilum, yeah. or you know, in the yep the ice yeah, cave, I think are. those were Kyber crystals, weren't they? Yep. Yep. And those. So, were... I mean, that's one of the expanded universe slash legends um, things that carried over. Right. right. Oh wait a minute! Kanan is wearing a glove, but. His fingers are exposed, so now I gotta know if there's now, fingernails. Does on he it. have fingernails or not? That's the truth question. If anybody who's watching this right now, let us know in the comment section below if Kanan has fingernails. Is Kanan Cannon? Kanan is Cannon. Is... <laughs> it's an inside joke. <laughs> My kids call Kanan Ken. Ken. <laughs> works. Can. Ken. Ken. Uh, close enough. Yeah. No, I'm looking at the Star Wars uh, Wikipedia, and I like how it says it took them several weeks to build that lightsaber. Yeah, that's something that Zeb, Zeb had said. He said, is this kid going to take... This kid's been working on this for several weeks. When is he going to be done? And then... Uh, as we're, a stapler. Yep, the stapler comes out, and there it is. <laughs> <laughs> but he makes this out of all spare parts, which I thought was pretty funny. That was cool. a yeah. part of Chopper, a part of some uh, supplies. That was pretty cool. It's got the D <laughs> ring on there. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It looks a lot like Luke's lightsaber. You know the Luke's Jedi lightsaber, actually. Yeah, you know, the, 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 the hand part. So that's interesting. Then you got the but blaster. Does it look like the toy. Yeah. Yeah. So well, that's good. The the actual lightsaber I've heard is hitting Target stores and Toys R Us's. So um. yeah, I've, I've seen those a few times there. Oh, good timing! I gotta say these lightsabers have uh, been uh, quite controversial. You know, the crossed one, and now you got one that has a uh, a little block in front of your hands. Now, uh... <laughs> and it's can kind you of... the part without <laughs> falling off? Right. I gotta say, I like how the lightsabers look in Rebels. I like how they look very uh, sharp and like very thin. Yeah, very thin. I I like how that looks. When I first saw this lightsaber with the, you know, kind of the hand guard, it reminded me of the original Kenner, uh, twelve-inch doll lightsabers yeah. because you had to put your to because the Ooh. figures didn't hold their lightsabers. They didn't have like the kung fu grip that the G.I. Joe figures had. They had kind of more of an open, you know, lobster claw type hand, and you had to yeah. slip the <laughs> lightsaber handle guard over the fingers in order for the figure to hold it, and that's exactly what this reminded me of. That's probably what they're going for, I would imagine, with, you know, a little bit of added uh, gadgets and whatnot. I mean, because Imperial Troop Transport, Kenner Design, so they're definitely aiming for, I think, a lot of that in the show. I remember when the first images of Rebels came out, talking about that lightsaber quite a bit, and the obvious nod to the uh, Luke Skywalker Ben Kenobi lightsabers. Yeah. Right. And also, when he ignited the lightsaber, it was a different sound. Than very cool sound. The, yeah, it was like a more rustier sound, like a very... Deeper. A deeper, yeah, deeper lightsaber hum than what we've heard before. Did you notice uh, Kanan was uh, hold pointed right in uh, Ezra's face? Basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> Actually, Chris, you were just speaking about new lightsabers. Even the Inquisitor has a uh, uh, spinning yeah. lightsaber. That's new. Well, yeah, well, the spinning is nothing new, but like, I don't know, like all these weird like handles and all this stuff. And, um... Yeah, the blaster firing <clears throat> hasn't been revealed yet. I guess in the series, but we all know that Ezra's lightsaber is a dual-purpose weapon. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I mean, as a whole, having Frank Oz return, having the lightsaber finally appear after various episodes and, and products of toys coming out from it, we finally get to see Ezra with it. It's going to be cool to see how he uses it in battle, and um, yeah, I give this lightsaber... This lightsaber... I give this episode um, 
a rating out of 10 stars, I give it a 9. No, I give it a 10. I give it a 10. I mean, at first, um, I gave it like an 8 just because I don't know why, but then I rewatched it and I gave it a 10 because it felt. It was cooler, but I'm going to go through everybody, and everybody can say what they thought of the episode, you know, if it's 10 stars, so 1 to 10. Chris, what would you rate it? I would rate it close to 10. I'd probably say 8 or 9. Um, the banter between the two kind of always just kind of gets to me after a while. Um, I did like the dark overtones of the Inquisitor. Um, I think it was just done very well as being a threat to Ezra and seeing you know what can happen in the future uh, I think it was a pretty solid episode though overall yeah I think for me the only reason I put it at 10 is because of Yoda if Yoda wasn't in there I'd probably give it like an 8.5 um, but Yoda is kind of the, the core of this episode <clears throat> what about you Marco? I'd give it a 9 fair rating uh, I, I, oh sorry Oh, no. <laughs> it's cool. I really liked uh, they finally revealed his lightsaber, and I feel like finally we can have good action scenes now with Ezra. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't have to use his uh, slingshot like, anymore. Well, he probably still will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about you, Dan? They have to make a toy of that lightsaber still some someday. You know, they could make a, a, a gauntlet with a lightsaber shooting a Nerf projectile somehow. I, it I does. Know. That's what the new one does. Yep. Does it? Yeah, that's exactly what it does. It's got like I think it actually has plastic nerf darts. Yeah, plastic darts. <laughs> so the, you think they're gonna make that? No, they it's have. out now. It's out. Oh, see, I got. I should make toys. <laughs> um, I I have only seen the episode the one time, so I'm I'm gonna stick with uh, probably an eight, just because I'd like to watch it a few more times and some stuff that we talked about tonight I didn't catch the first time. Um, but I obviously loved having Yoda's appearance, and as we talked about, the journey of Ezra echoing uh, Luke's journey, and uh, frankly, Starkiller's journey in some way, if you go back to the video games. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I like the relationship between Kanan and Ezra that continues to develop. The only thing I, I wish I would have seen more of the other members of the cast, but this really wasn't their spotlight, so that's actually kind of fine. Right. And Jason? Um, for me, I think this is a, a 10 worthy episode from animation, story, uh, dialogue, action, suspense. It was tough to tough to rate this any lower than any of the previous episodes that have come out. So it's uh, a high one for me. Yeah, so that's our review of this episode. We're going to do a quick 10 mig 10 15 minute segment kind of talking about what's go coming from Rebels, what's going to happen with Rebels, products out from Rebels, and a little bit about Celebration Anaheim. If you guys are in need of new Rebels items, you can pick up all the new LEGO Star Wars sets. They have some new um, sets cool. out. I picked this up at Toys R Us the other day. It comes with Sabine, Ezra, and a Stormtrooper. And this is, I think, the first official. Um, uh, item, I guess, to have a Sabine painted figure. Cause I don't and it has Ezra's lightsaber, I saw that. Right, so here we have the Sabine minifigure. He's, he's already opened awesome. all of it. Yep, so no helmet, but she does look pretty cool. Does uh, she have more than one face? Yeah, so the other side of the face be... Oh, she uh -huh. lost her hair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so... That's a pretty cool minifigure. Um, then you got, yeah, like Dan just said, Ezra and his lightsaber, time perfectly. If I can get him to hold it. There you go. Cool. So He's a little bit different than the first release of him and the other set, and then you just get a generic Stormtrooper. The speeder bikes I didn't bother opening um, for a while. I'll build them at some point. But yeah, if you're looking for Lego Star Wars sets, they have that, and then they have a really cool one Imperial Troop Transport, um, which comes with four Stormtroopers and the actual transport. And then the other one is the Inquisitor's TIE Advance, which comes with the Inquisitor, TIE Fighter, Pilot, and a Stormtrooper, I think. And then they have 
the ATDP Walker, which comes with Agent Callus, a Stormtrooper, and I believe two ATDP pilots. So has anybody else picked up any Rebels Lego sets? There's the Wookiee tra- uh, transport one, too. Right. There's a there's a Wookiee set with that. A couple, and then... couple Wookiees and uh, Kanan. Right. So that's definitely um, a cool well, pack to get. I did get the Shadow Troopers. Nice. Well, that's cool. cool to get. I think one thing that LEGO is doing right with um, releasing these sets is you get a little bit of a mix of everything. You get original trilogy, you get Rebels, you get Clone Wars, you get prequels, you get the EU. Yeah. Even the Clone Wars micro series, which kind of <coughs> threw me for a loop there. But, um, yeah, if you want new Rebels items, LEGO has them. And like we just said, the Ezra lightsaber. But, uh... Jason brought some cool news to our attention. Uh, the latest Star Wars Insider is now arriving in mailboxes. It's not out till the 20th, but for subscribers, you can currently start to get it. It has Zeb on the cover, but Jason let us know that there's some... There's a... Uh, there it is. There's a description for the finale episodes. It's no spoilers, so if... Yeah, um, it says that... We all know Rebel Season 2 is going to premiere at uh, Celebration uh, Anaheim. Um, I'll just read the article quick. It's just a quick paragraph. It says, Attendees will witness the global theatrical premiere of the first episode of Star Wars Rebel Season 2, which continues the epic adventures of the crew and the ghost and further reveals the early days of the rebellion against the Empire. The Star Wars Rebel Season 2 premiere will follow a special cast panel featuring members of the cast, creators of the Disney animated series, Dave Filoni, and we'll discuss the startling episode one finale, as well as offer sneak peeks of what's to come in season two. In addition, a screening of the two-part season one finale will directly precede the theatrical world premiere of season two. Wow. So I I thought that was interesting, the startling season one finale. So, so somebody's dead. Somebody Someone, something dead. happens. Yeah. <laughs> somebody's gonna lose a limb. Somebody's gonna die. Something's gonna happen. That's I can see. Okay, look, you need to have somebody to lose a hand in some aspect of Star Wars. So it's, <laughs> if Ezra doesn't lose it, then hey, you can totally disregard fingernails at that point if he loses both of his hands. You don't have to animate that. Or an arm. Or, or leg. An arm, right. Or leg. <laughs> you know, a, a whole half. So. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what that's about. Startling season finale. And also, now, does it say that the season one finale will be premiere or not premiering, but proceeding? So that's going to be after the season no, two? No, pre- preceding. Oh, preceding, so before. So they're going to they're gonna show the two-parter before they show the season one or season two premiere. All right. Now, if those of you who haven't been to Star Wars Celebration, basically what they did with Clone Wars was they would air the first episode from the next season. I attended Celebration 6, and what they did was they showed the um, last two episodes of Season 4, which are the ones about Darth Maul, and then they went into Revival, which is where you know we get to see Darth Maul back in Savage. And, um, and then straight after that, they did a, a, a cast panel. Everybody <clears throat> talked about the show. Questions were answered, and they showed a Season 5 trailer, which... That trailer has to be one of the best Clone Wars trailers. I mean, you got to see yep. Sidious versus um, Maul and Savage. You got to see uh, the Republic Commando. That's what's going to be an event not to miss. So if you're going to Celebration, you must attend this. It's it's spectacular, really. Plus, I mean, you get ca- they're probably going to do a red carpet like they did with Season 6, and that's your opportunity to meet some of the cast, and yeah, so... Um, celebration is going to be huge, especially for Rebels and Force Awakens. And um, Jason also learned that uh, Star Wars episodes one through three in 3D will be um, episodes one and two will be shown, and episode three will be premiering at Celebration Anaheim, which is exciting because obviously episodes one and two have already been shown. Episode three has not yet been shown. So this is definitely going to be exciting for attendees to be able to see it. I don't know if it's going to be released to public or not. I That's pretty doubtful, but if it is, that would be awesome too. Yeah, episode one was the only one that got the theatrical, you know, national um, 
release, and then episode two, Attack of the Clones, was premiered at um, Celebration Europe. I think they've had a you know a couple screenings in California of yeah. that, um, but not a you know nationwide release. And then, like you said, yeah, Revenge of the Sith will be premiered in 3D at Celebration Anaheim, so you could check out those three in 3D, which will be kind of cool. And they'll show the original trilogy too in their standard, you know, presentation. Absolutely. And honestly, to have Revenge of the Sith premiering in 3D at Celebration is awesome because it, it's about to hit the 10th anniversary in May, so perfect oh, yeah. time. Okay. Ten years since Revenge of the Sith, which I remember um, when I was a kid and that movie came out, just the marketing for it was everywhere you'd go, Revenge of the Sith, you know, figures, books, posters, um, anything and everything Star Wars you would find for that line. I didn't personally see it in theaters because I don't, I wasn't shown Star Wars yet until I was a little bit older. Um, I don't think I'd, I think that would have freaked me out a bit. So, yeah, I wasn't able to see it in 2005, but um, I'm excited to see it. I mean, the prior, th- prior to that, prior to episode three hitting the screens, and I, I just spent uh, part of the New Year vacation revisiting Clone Wars, the original micro-series, mm. which had its finale in 2005. So this is the 10th anniversary of that as well. Right. It blew my mind when I came to realize that. I'm like, oh my god, wow, this is like a banner year, not only for the new Star Wars, but also the anniversaries of several of the old Star Wars properties, which is kind of fun. Absolutely. So, I think the most exciting thing about Celebration Anaheim is just the suspense of not knowing what it's going to be like this time, because obviously, you know, there's not... Um, the regular just a TV show coming out. I mean, we got like you said, we got anniversaries, we got episode seven, we got rebels, we got products, we got new licensees, we have Marvel coming in with their Star Wars comics. So it's definitely going to be exciting. Starts two weeks, right? Yeah, I think that comes out in two weeks. March thirteenth or fourteenth, and I've heard a lot of people say that they've been able to get that issue early. So. Um, I guess hit your comic book shops and Barnes and Noble. I know they have comics because those things are leaking out. So um, that's cool. I've heard a lot of good things about it, and um, that's like you know the official canon. Um, yeah, I've said this multiple times on the show. If you're watching and you're debating whether or not to go to celebration, you must attend this year because the time is ticking. We got three months till celebration. It's gonna be huge. I would go. I would personally, if you've never been to a celebration, this is the time to go. <laughs> sell, sell some of your collection if you have to. If you have extras <laughs> and stuff, put those on eBay. I've had a had to uh, get rid of a lot of stuff to, to save up a little more. For Apparently, it. not all of it. Yeah. Yeah. What about all that stuff behind you? Yeah, you don't need that. <laughs> yeah, it's open. No one wants to buy open stuff. I'm actually yeah. I'm in the process of purging through some of my collection stuff. I because when I was moving, I was like. Man, I have a lot of stuff, <laughs> and now that I'm more astromech focused, I'm, I think I'm. I have some boxes set off to the side of what I want to get rid of. Nice. So if you guys are, if you guys don't think you'll be able to make it, then obviously you know you can't. But definitely, if you can go to Celebration, go. All of us here will be there. Uh, yeah. So I think that pretty much concludes tonight's episode. Um, does anybody else have anything else to add about Rebels or anything? Nope. Nope. Okay. No new figures spotted yet. The Sabine pack. Nothing. I did spot some new figures. You did. <laughs> they were the twelve-inch shampoo bottle figures at Target. Yes. I have not seen those before. <laughs> but they had Trooper, Vader, um, Ezra, and one more. I can't remember. Callus. Callus. That's it. Yes. I, I, I was, I was looking like at going. Wow! I hadn't seen these before, and I looked at them. And I put them right back on the peg because I don't want them. Um, I noticed something while I was grocery shopping today. I went to my toy section at my local Meyer. I'm sure people who are in my region, Michigan, anywhere, you know, they have a Meyer. 
uh, the command sets are on clearance. Mm, doesn't surprise me. Not by, not by much, but they're starting to go on clearance. I don't understand how there's new waves coming into them. I recently looked. Well, they See, probably I don't... Were made and prepared, so they're probably yeah. some places are just stopping them. You know. They when I want. went to Target the other day, I totally forgot that there was even a new wave coming, and I noticed that they had like a Grievous pack, a Captain Rex pack. Uh, they were good when they came out, since we had Any no Yoda pack. Yeah, and the Yoda pack. I personally bought all the Rebel sets because Rebels figures hadn't come out yet in August, and um, that's why I bought mine. But I kind of regret spending thirty-five plus dollars on those because it's just not that great. But, but how many figures did you get? Too many. <laughs> <laughs> so a good probably you guys. The oh wait, we're still live. Never mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you everybody for listening. Uh, All right. You can follow us at the Wolfpack Podcast on YouTube. You can follow us on iTunes. Our website, yeah, and our website. <laughs> um, on Twitter, on Facebook. Um, please subscribe to us here on YouTube. That would mean a lot to us, and your support is greatly appreciated. Star Wars Celebration Anaheim coverage coming from us in three months. And uh, you can also find me and Marco and Dan, and Nabil, and Steve, and whoever in the Wolfpack wants to come on the Maracuru podcast, our Arrow podcast, so check that out. Um, and where can we find you, Chris? Um, on wolfpackpodcast.com and my Astromech collecting page, The Bad Motivator, on Facebook and YouTube. And Marco? Find me at uh, the wolfpackpodcast.com, uh, Crimson Darth Maul on YouTube, and uh, Facebook. Dan? Oh, I, I pretty much show up everywhere. You know that. <laughs> I make guest appearances at every place. Lately, I've been posting some new uh, action figure galleries on Jedi News and Sand Troopers. And obviously, I'm just hanging out on Facebook all the time because I'm a huge nerd with nothing to do with my life. <laughs> <laughs> and Jason. Uh, you find me on yakface.com and the Realm Recap, our weekly uh, collecting overview podcast. And our new episode will go live tomorrow sometime. Awesome. We will share that on our page. So thank you all for listening to another episode of the Wolfpack Podcast. Thank you all for your comments. And uh, we will be back on Tuesday night at 10.05 p.m. I know, weird time. Uh, for our Rebels Roundtable on um, Season 1, Episode 9, Idiots Array, which will be the Lando Calrissian episode. So stay tuned for that. And as always, may the Force be with you. Yep. May the Force be with you.